Hi students. Today we will going to discuss about the environmental science and engineering subject unit 4 social issues under the environment. Before going to the topic first you know what are all the various social issues present in our society. So the main problem in our society water scarcity problem how to rectify this water scarcity problem so we have to save the water the best method to saving the water is the rainwater harvesting and the water shed management water conservation <laughs> the next problem is greenhouse effect that means global warming the climate change factor then acid rain formation ozone layer depletion rehabilitation resettlement so these are all the some of the social issues in our environment so we will discuss one by one first sustainable development so how can we move from unsustainable to sustainable development? First sustainable development means meeting the needs for their own needs without affecting the future generation. So whatever may be we have to developing in our environment in the development which will not affect to the peoples and also which will not affect to the future generation in the development we are called as the sustainable development so the true sustainable development aims to at optimum use of natural resources with a high degree of reusability minimum wastage of the product least generation of toxic byproducts and the maximum productivity so these are all the various steps for the unsustainable development into sustainable development then sustainable development is a multi-dimensional concept aiming at benefits derived from the interactions between society economy and environment so it is the triangle so sustainable development is the interlink between the environment society and the economy so any one of this factor which will be affected the another which will be easily affected so the three factors like the environment society and economic are the stabilized one with the stable form So all the factors which one will be interlinked. So that to build up the sustainable development the following approaches are proposed. First one is the developing appropriate technology. So in the technology which will be not affected in our environment. So which will be useful to the society. Then we have to follow the reduce, reuse, recycle. That means three R approach. So this also to maintain the sustainable development in our society. Then providing environmental education and awareness among the people. So each and individual we have to first know about the environmental awareness. Then we have to give the knowledge about the people to the environmental education. Then consumption of renewable resources. What is the meaning of renewable resources? So it is the resources we can generate again and again or we can use again and again. For example, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, hydrothermal energy. So these are the some of the examples of the renewable resources. So we have to consume the renewable resources for the future utilization of the peoples. Then conservation of non-renewable resources 
So it is very important. Non-renewable resources like coal, tar, petroleum, diesel, kerosene, nuclear fuel that means the uranium, thorium. So these are the, uh, some of the examples of the non-renewable energy resources. So we have to conserve the non-renewable energy resources with effectively which is also to uh, useful to the peoples. Then population control. So population is mainly interlinked within our country about the economy. So uh, smoothly increasing the population only we have to go to the next level into the country for the developed stage. So population is the main factor to our economical uh, issues in our country. So we have to slowly increase in the population. Okay, next topic, urban problems related to energy. What is urban and rural? Urban means city, rural means village. So urbanization means the movementation of people from a rural area into city area due to the want of better education, communication, health, employment, hospital, then uh, other factors. So the movementation of human population from rural area into urban area, that is called as the urbanization. What are all the various causes of urbanization? Since cities are the main centers of economic growth, trade, transportation, education, medical facilities and employment, rural peoples move to cities. So the peoples move to the urban area due to the want of many advanced activities. About 50% of the world population lives in the urban area and the peoples from rural area is moving to cities for the employment. So the employment opportunity uh, due to the want of employment opportunity the peoples move from rural to urban area. So then the urban growth is so fast, it is very difficult to accommodate all their facilities within a limited area. As a result, there is spreading of the cities into suburban or rural areas. So the phenomena is known as urban sprawl. So urban problems related to energy, they are mainly focused into the urbanization. Urbanization is the very, very important problem in our society. How can we reduce the uh, population in the urban area? So we have to equally give the employment opportunity and the health and communication education to the rural areas. Only we have to reduce the urbanization problem. Then energy demanding activities in the urban areas. In developing countries, urban growth is very fast and the pollution is uncontrollable. Like India. When compared to rural people, urban people consumes a lot of energy and materials and generates a lot of waste because the crowd is very very large compared to the rural area so that the large amount of the waste is occurring to the urban areas. This is because urban people have a higher standard of life. Their lifestyle demands more energy inputs. For example, the energy demanding activities in the residential and the commercial lightings, transportation including motorcycle, car, public transport, then modern lifestyle using a large number of electrical gadgets in everyday life. How can we solve the urban energy problem? 
urban peoples may use public transport instead of the using motorcycles and cars we have to reduce the air pollution then energy consumption must be minimized in all aspects then use of energy efficient technology in the urban peoples then use of solar energy and wind energy instead of the normal uh, coal power energy imposing strict laws penalties and energy audit into the urbans so these are all the some of the points we have to solve the urban problems so the each and the individual peoples uh, should they, uh, have the awareness about the environmental pollution that only we have to reduce the urban problems then go to the water conservation the water scarcity is the most problem in our society how can we rectify the water scarcity problem so the water conservation is the very important point to reduce the water scarcity problem in our society the process of saving water for future utilization is known as the water conservation how can we save the water so the various methods are adopting into the saving the water so you will see one by one first what are all the various needs of water conservation through the resources of water or more the quality and reliability are not high due to changes in environmental factors then better lifestyle requires more fresh water the another important factor is the increase in the population due to the need of more water due to deforestation the annual rainfall is also decreasing so that the water scarcity problem will occur then over exploitation of the ground water leads to drought so the over exploitation will occur through the bore well the deep well the lack of air we have to consume the more amount of water from the ground air. so these are the over exploitation then agricultural practices industrial activities require more fresh water then what are all the strategies of water conservation first one is the reducing evaporation losses how can we reduce the evaporation losses by placing horizontal barriers of asphalt below the soil surface which increase the water availability and crop yield then reducing the irrigation losses sprinkling like motion irrigation and drip irrigation conserves the water by 30 to 40 percentage then growing yield crops varieties which require less water irrigation in early morning or later evening reduces the evaporation losses then how can we reuse of water treated water treated waste water can be used for fertility irrigation then grey water from washing bathroom etc may be used for washing cars watering gardens which have to used into the nearby gardens so which will save the water and consumes consumption of the water is very low then preventing wastage of water closing the taps when it is not in use then repairing any leakage of the pipes using small capacity of the taps then decreasing runoff losses by counter cultivation or terrace farming then avoid discharge of sewage the discharge of sewage into natural water resources should be prevented as much as possible so each and individual 
peoples should have aware about the water conservation so all the peoples should have the knowledge about the uh, water conservation so that only we have to conserve the water some of the main methods of the water conservations are the rainwater harvesting method and another one is the watershed management so the rainwater harvesting it is the familiar method and costless method it will be following all the peoples into the society so the rainwater harvesting is the technique of capturing and storing of rainwater for further utilization is called as the um, water saving method the need and objectives of rainwater harvesting some of the objectives to meet the increasing demands of water is the first uh, the energy conserving activity uh, water energy conserving activity then second one is the to raise the water table by recharging the ground water then to reduce the ground water contamination from the intrusion of saline water saline means salt water then to reduce the surface runoff losses surface runoff means the movement of water from higher region to lower region that will be reduced using the rainwater harvesting method then to reduce the storm water runoff and the soil erosion soil erosion means the removal of soil covered by arid or semi arid bar water which will be also reduced by using the rainwater harvesting method then to increase hydrostatic pressure to land stop subsidence of the water then to minimize water crises and the water conflicts okay then we go into the concept of rainwater harvesting rainwater harvesting involves collecting water that falls on the roof of the house during rain storms during the rainfall and passing it through pvc or aluminium pipe to a nearby covered storage unit in the earth then method or types of rainwater harvesting the most common method of rainwater harvesting is roof top rainwater harvesting roof top rainwater harvesting in this method rainwater is collected from the roof of the building and is stored in the ground for future utilization so in the house we have to in the maintain the roof in the roof the building the store into the ground water for the use of utilization it is the lowest cost low cost method and effective techniques the rain water from the top of the roof or road surfaces playgrounds open lands is diverted into the surface tank or recharge pits through a delivery system so it will be increase in the water level into the ground so this can be used to recharge underground aquifers by diverting the water from stored water to dug well or a bore well so these are all the simple method to maintain the water into the ground so here i given the schematic diagram of the how to conserve the water so here so during the rainfall system we have to collect the water from the top of the roof so we have to connect it into the pvc pipe into the uh, roof and it is uh, linked with the connected to the nearby the ground or under the pit or by the well so during the rainfall in that water moves from roof top of the house into the um, dug well or uh, nearby the well or nearby the pit through the pvc pipe so which will be increase in the water level or ground water level into the uh, layers then what are all the various advantages of rain water harvesting first advantage is the reduction in the use of current of pumping water then mitigating the effects of droughts and achieving drought proofing then increasing the availability of water from well 
రేస్ ఇన్ గ్రౌండ్ వాటర్ లెవెల్స్ మినిమైజింగ్ ద సాయిల్ ఎరోషన్ అంటే ఫ్లడ్ హజార్డ్స్ ఫ్యూచర్ జనరేషన్ ఈస్ అష్యూర్డ్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ సో ద మెయిన్లీ వాటర్ స్కాసిటీ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఈస్ రెక్టిఫైడ్ సో దెన్ ఆల్సో ద పంపింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద వాటర్ ఈస్ ఇంక్రీస్డ్ డ్రౌట్ విల్ బి రెడ్యూస్డ్ దెన్ ఇంక్రీసింగ్ ద అవైలబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ వెల్ వాటర్ ఈస్ ఇంక్రీస్డ్ గ్రౌండ్ వాటర్ ఆల్సో లివిల్ ఇంక్రీస్డ్ దెన్ వీ హ్యావ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు అవాయిడ్ ద ఫ్లడ్ అండ్ ద సాయిల్ ఎరోషన్ దెన్ ఫ్యూచర్ జనరేషన్ ఈస్ అష్యూర్డ్ ఆఫ్ ద వాటర్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద అడ్వాంటేజెస్ ఆఫ్ ద రైన్ వాటర్ హార్వెస్టింగ్ then next method is the watershed management watershed management and drainage basin is the another important conservation of the water so the watershed is defined as the land area from which water drains under the influence of gravity into a stream lake reservoir or other bodies of surface water వాటర్ షెడ్ మీన్స్ ద ల్యాండ్ ఏరియా ఫ్రమ్ విచ్ వాటర్ డ్రైన్స్ అండర్ ద ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఆఫ్ గ్రావిటీ గ్రావిటేషనల్ ఫోర్స్ ద వాటర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద అప్పర్ లేయర్ ఇన్ టు ద డీప్ ఇన్ టు ద గ్రౌండ్ స్ట్రీమ్ లేక్ రిసర్వేర్ ఆర్ బాడీ ఆఫ్ ద సర్ఫేస్ వాటర్ దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఎస్ ద వాటర్ షెడ్ దెన్ వాటర్ షెడ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ మీన్స్ ద మేనేజ్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ రెయిన్ ఫాల్ అండ్ రిసల్టెంట్ రన్ ఆఫ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ వాటర్ షెడ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ then it also involves conservation regeneration and proper usage of water then what are the factors affecting the watershed uncontrolled activities like unplanned unscientific land use activities are the main factor affecting the watershed then overgrazing deforestation mining construction activities also affect and degrade the various watershed overgrazing means we have to consume the over um, uh, vegetation without giving to the chance into the future that is called as the over grazing deforestation means cutting of trees or removal of forest area without giving into the chance that is called as the deforestation and the mining activity means to the process of taking the mineral from the earth is called as the mining activities this also disturbing the watershed management then construction activities like the bridge construction road construction uh, building construction industrial activities also which affect into the watershed so these are all the some of the disturbing uh, activities of the watershed management the need or objectives of watershed management what are all the objectives to minimize the risk of flood drought and landslides so mainly to avoid the flood drought and landslides to maintain the watershed then for developmental activities like domestic water supply irrigation hydropower generation also include into the objectives of water management then to generate huge employmental opportunities in the backward rain fed areas to ensure livelihood security then to promote social forestry and horticultural activity on all suitable areas of the land then to protect the soil from erosion by runoff to raise the ground water level so these are all the main objectives of the watershed management then concept of watershed management watershed is not a technology but a concept which integrates construction management and budgeting of rainwater through simple but in watershed management various civil structures were constructed to improve groundwater storage levels some of the simplest methods of the water management techniques first is the trenches trenches means pit to improve groundwater storage then earthen dam on stone embankment to check the run off water farm pond farm pond means to improve water storage capacity of the catchment area catchment area means uh jama into the river like areas water reservoirs like the lake 
uh, in the in, in, these are all the some of the pond these are all the catchment area that means uh, we have to store the water into the pit or a lake uh, during the rainfall from the water flows to higher region to lower region through the channels or rivers then underground barriers dikes to raise the water table then how can we maintenance of the watershed or components of integrated watershed management by water harvesting a forestation or a forest a forestation means we have to plant more number of trees into the uh, earth or forest area or land area then reducing the soil erosion so more number of trees with the root which absorb the water so the avoiding of the soil erosion then scientific mining and goring which also helpful to maintain the uh, watershed management then public participation that means public awareness each and every people should have awareness about the environment and uh, water conservation uh, methods then minimizing the livestock population also which is helpful to maintain the water water into the earth or environment or society okay now we are going to the next topic environmental ethics environmental ethics refers to the issues principles and guidelines related to the human interactions with their environment so what are all the various importance of the environment how it is helpful to the society then how it is uh, improving into the uh, improving the country into the next level so these are all the some of the points to environmental ethics so it also means that efforts must be taken to protect and the environment and to maintain its stability from the hazardous chemical pollutants then functions of the environment life supporting medium for all organisms so environment is the life supporting medium for all organisms organism means uh, living organisms like animals plants and microorganisms fungus bacteria so these are the various organisms then provides food air water and other important natural resources to the human beings so without air water land area sunlight there is no living being component in our environment so this uh, air water a uh, soil sunlight the sky which will be helpful to the all living organisms so we have to aware about the this uh, uh, panchabhuta activities into the environment this integrates all the waste materials Uh, discharged by the modern society is the another problem then moderates the climate conditions of the soil a healthy economy depends on a healthy environment okay the what are the main environmental problems occurs in our society the main problem is the deforestation activities the deforestation activities is the main problem in our society so which will be increase in the uh, society it will affects the environment like the climate change will occur then global warming uh, pollution will occur uh, increase in the carbon dioxide level into the society so these are all the Uh, main problem due to the deforestation activities so we have to reduce the deforestation activities then population growth and urbanization is the main problem in our society to increasing in the energy demanding activities in our environment then pollution pollution is the another problem there is the various types of pollutions will occur air pollution water then noise pollution marine pollution thermal pollution nuclear hazards radioactive pollution are are, are the uh, main problems main types of pollutions into the society so which will be discharged are effluent of smoke discharging from the industries also the main problems so nowadays there is a number of industries are increased which increases in the uh, or which releases the higher amount of the sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide gases in that gases which will be react with the cloud 
to uh, form the acid rain so in that acid rain should be affect into the uh, peoples and other physical properties in our society so we have to avoid the acid rain to uh, avoid the releases of the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen dioxide gases from the industries so we have to properly checking the uh, gases uh, coming out from the industries that only we have to reduce the rain acid rain then water scarcity is the main problem already we discussed the various points about the water scarcity then land degradation and the degradation of the soil fertility is also the another environmental problems so this will occur in the modern agriculture field we have to apply the more amount of the fertilizers and pesticides into the uh, vegetations to increases in the soil fertility okay then how can we solve the environmental problems so first each and every individual we have to should take the awareness about the environmental problems so each and individual uh, peoples should have awareness about the uh, how to conserve the water how to conserve the soil how to conserve the air so this must be uh, first factor to environmental problems solve the environmental problems then reduce the waste of matter and energy resources then by using the recycle reuse and uh, re using purpose as, as many of uh, out waste products and uh, resources as possible that means three r system reduce reuse recycling process is also the one of the uh, rectifying the environmental problems then also over exploitation of natural resources must be avoided or reduced then soil degradation must be minimized by planting the more number of trees into the uh, earth or land then biodiversity conservation of the earth must be protected biodiversity means variety of variability animal and plant species in the area so that must be protected then reduce population and increase the economic growth of our country so reduce the population population reduce uh, reduction also one of the uh, main Uh, solution to uh, solve the environmental problems okay now we are going to the next topic that means climate change what is climate climate is the average weather condition of the uh, earth or average weather condition of the area so the average weather is maintained by the natural process so it is the general weather conditions seasonal variations of the region the average of such conditions over a long period is called as the climate factor so there are there is the four seasonal seasons are uh, available in our uh, india one is the winter season then rainy season then summer season then airy season so these are all the four types of the weather conditions in our uh, india in our country then the earth average surface temperature and the climate have been changes throughout the world 4.7 billion year history okay the changes are gradual at sometimes we are us at other times they are q we have relatively stable climate or uh, thousands of years due to which we have practiced our agricultural practices so the climate changes factors is mainly due to occur by the activities of the peoples so the maintenance of the climate changes is uh, in the hand of the peoples only then causes of climate change presence of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increase the global temperature depletion of ozone layer uneven distribution of rainfall rotation on earth of the axis seasonal variations are the main uh, causes of climate changing in the factor so greenhouse gases means we have to use the carbon dioxide methane chlorofluorocarbon carbon tetrachloride chlorofluoro bromocarbons 
so large amount of the carbon uh, halogen gases into the various industries and our activities so which will be affect the environment to increase the climate change factor so we have to avoid such gases into the environment then depletion of the ozone layer so the ozone layer depletion occur mainly due to the chlorofluorocarbon uh, gases or chlorobromocarbon uses into the refrigerator or uh, air conditioners so we have to avoid the time, such of gases in the refrigerators and the air conditioners then uneven distribution of the rainfall the uneven rain, rainfall which will be occur into the due to the uh, people's activity man made activity so this will be occur due to the deforestation process the rotation of the earth on its axis in the main uh, causes to occur in the climate change factor then seasonal changes what are the various effects of climate change the first uh, effect is the uh, disturbing, disturbing the agricultural practices then migration of the animals from one region to another region then humans takes place and then uh, upset the hydrological cycle result in flood drought in different parts of the world then global pattern of the winds and the ocean currents gets disturbed hydrological cycle means it is a cycle the evaporation process will occur and open the sea it will be converted into the cloud then by precipitation process the cloud which will be uh, fall into the rain falling process then uh, the, by surface running process the water move from land area into the sea area again the sea water is in the forming in the cloud by the evaporation process this is the hydrological cycle okay the first and uh, next is the global warming global warming is the main issues main problem in our society so the global warming is the progressive warming up of the earth surface due to the blanketing effect of the man made carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is known as the greenhouse effect so normally the atmospheric oxygen which will be maintaining in the climate in our environment but in the daily life we have to use a number of private vehicles and a number of industries releases the more amount of the carbon dioxide so in that carbon dioxide in the above the uh, surface area of the land in the atmosphere which are forming the blanketing like uh, uh, layer in the blanket like layer which uh, penetrate the sunlight into that uh, area then it goes to the earth so in that uh, light energy again reflect to the uh, above the atmosphere like uh, carbon dioxide which not allow the sunlight into the above the blanket uh, greenhouse layer again in that uh, uh, sunlight goes to the earth area so this process will occur again and again so which will be increases in the temperature into the earth area is the resulting is the increase in uh, temperature of our earth is called as the green, uh, global warming or greenhouse effect so this will be explained by in the next uh, page in the diagram so the increase the inputs of the carbon dioxide is the other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere from human activities will enhances the earth natural greenhouse effect so this enhanced greenhouse effect is called as the global warming what are all the various effects of global warming to increase the sea level of the water and affect the agriculture and the forestry activities effect on water resources effect on terrestrial ecosystem terrestrial means land related ecosystems so uh, that the terrestrial ecosystem is further classified into three types one is the grassland ecosystem and uh, desert ecosystem and uh, forest ecosystem in that three ecosystem which will be affected by the greenhouse gases or global warming then effect of human health human health also affected how can we measure to check global warming and how can we prevent the measures carbon dioxide emissions can be decreased by reducing the use of fossil fuels fossil fuels means coal uh, petroleum gases and uh, diesels so we have to avoid in that uh, 
more usage usage of renewable resources such as wind solar and hydro power energy to reduce the global warming then plant more number of trees that means afforestation then shift from coal to natural gases then adopt sustainable agriculture then stabilize population growth then efficiently remove carbon dioxide from smoke stacks remove atmospheric carbon dioxide by using a photosynthetic algae so these are all the various preventive measures of the global warming then clean development mechanism that means cdm cdm is an arrangement under the kyoto Pro 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 protocol which allows industrialized countries with a greenhouse gases reduction commitment to invested into the projects that reduces emissions in developing countries the main aim of to the process the develop the sustainable uh, in all countries by reducing carbon dioxide hydrofluorocarbon gases of the emissions then the clean developmental mechanism allows net greenhouse gases emissions to be reduced at a much lower global cost by financing emissions reduction pro pro projects in developing countries whereas cost are lower than in industrialized countries the next topic is the acid rain that means acid precipitation so already i given some idea about the acid rain so the normally rain water is always slightly acidic because of the fact that carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere gets dissolved in it so because of the presence of sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide gases as the pollutants in the atmosphere the ph of the rain water is further lowered so ph means part of hydrogen present in the water the ph scale value is the 1 to 14 so 7 is the neutral medium below 7 is the acidic medium above 7 is the basic in medium suppose the ph level is 1 that is called as the highly acidic in nature suppose ph is 4 to 7 is called as the slightly acidic that means weak acidic pH value is 7 to 10 or 7 to 11 is called as the weakly basic in nature that means weak base above the pH 11 to 14 is called as the strong base so these are all the pH scale value so in the acid rain which having in the uh, pH level is 4 to 7 so that it is the slightly acidic in nature so the type of precipitation of water is called acid rain or a acid deposition so here i given the ph scale value formation or causes of acid rain the acid rain means the presence of excessive acids of the rain water the thermal power plants industries and vehicles releases the nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere due to burning of coal and oil in the various industries which gases react with water vapor or cloud that forms acids and descend onto earth by precipitation process to form the acid rain for example so x react with the h2o to form the h2so4 uh, likewise uh, no x that means uh, uh, nitrogen oxide gases react with the water vapor to form nitric acid so due to the drifting of these gases in the atmosphere by the wind their presence uh, felt as far as 2000 kilometers so the air pollution of one nation could cause us acid rain for another nation so this is the process of acid rain though during the rainfall so then the water vapor connected with the sox and nox gases so during the precipitation process the cloud water mixed with the sox and the nox to form the uh, hno3 and uh, h2so4 uh, in the form of rainfall this is mixed with in the water to form the acid rain so which will be affect the all aquatics the main reason of the sox and nox gases is the industries and the vehicles uh, emission of the uh, various unharmful gases then what are the effects of acid rain 
Acid rain affects the human nervous system, respiratory system, digestive system and affected by acid rain. It also causes the premature death for the heart and lung irritations such as asthma, bone diseases, effects of acid rain on the buildings. For the Taj Mahal and Agra suffering at the present due to the SO2 and the H2O over acid fumes released from uh, Mathura refinery, crystals of copper sulphate and magnesium sulphate are formed as a result of corrosion caused by acid rain. Acid rain corrodes houses, monuments, stotters, bridges and fences. The British Parliament building also suffered or affected by damage due to the acid rains. Acid rain and the dry deposition of acids particles contribute to the corrosion of metals. The Deterioration of plant and the stone. Then effect of acid rain on terrestrial and lake ecosystem. The acid rain which affects the living beings also. The effect of acid rain on terrestrial vegetation reduces rate of photosynthesis process growth and increase the sensitivity to drought and disease. Photosynthesis means uh, production of starch by using the carbon dioxide, water, chlorophyll and the sunlight. So it uh, serve, uh, severely uh, retards the growth of crops such as uh, bean, beans, radish, potato, spanish and carrots. It causes number of complications in ponds, rivers and lakes, especially significant reduction in the fish population. That means it affects the aquatic. Aquatics. Aquatic means water living species. Then black flies, mosquitoes, deer flies, aquatic worms also there abundantly. The activity of bacteria and other microscopic animals is reduced in acidic water. So the dead materials and other substances lying on the bottom of the lakes are not rapidly decomposed. The essential nutrition such as nitrogen, phosphorus uh, stay locked up into the dead wastages. How can we control the acid rain? Proper monitor the air pollution by improved technologies by also the switching to clean combustion technologies. Then we have to properly maintain the SO2 and the NO2 emissions from the industries and the power plants should be reduced by using pollution control equipments. So coal with lower sulfur content is desirable to usage in the thermal power plants. Replacement of coal by natural gases would also reduce the problem. Then limiting of lakes and the soil should be done to correct the adverse effects of acid rain. Then real solutions into cut back on the use of fossil fuels by reducing our dependency on motor vehicles. So these are the some of the uh, methods to control the acid rain. Then we are going to the ozone layer depletion. The molecular formula for the ozone is O3 found throughout the atmosphere but most highly concentrated in the atmosphere between 10 and 15 kilometer above the sea level where it is known as ozone layer. So it is the schematic diagram of the ozone. So the ozone is formed in above the uh, atmosphere by natural process. So the molecular oxygen O2 connected with the nascent oxygen like the O dot or atomic oxygen O dot to form the O3. It is a cyclic process. So O3 is the molecular formula for the ozone. What are all the various importances of the ozone layer? So the ozone layer, without the ozone layer, life on Earth's surface would not be possible, would not be possible. Because in that ozone layer which is absorbing the unwanted uh, rays from the Earth, that means it filters the UV radiations and only uh, the positive rays only allow to the uh, ozone layer into the earth components. So it protects uh, as for the dam damaging ultraviolet radiations of the sun. In particular it filters out UVB radiation that means ultraviolet B radiations. 
recent evidence has shown that certain parts of the ozone layer are becoming thinner and ozone holes have de developed the consequences of any thinning of the ozone layer is that the more ultraviolet b radiation reaches the earth surface ultraviolet b radiation affects dna molecules causing damage to the outer surface of the plants and the animals so it in humans it causes the various skin cancers and the eye diseases so these are all the various importance of the ozone layer formation of ozone layer how the ozone layer is formed so here i given the mechanism so ozone is formed in the atmosphere stratospheric region by photochemical reaction so o2 means molecular oxygen h2 means uh, sunlight so o2 react with the h2 to form the o dot plus o dot that means atomic oxygen the atmo atomic oxygen rapidly react with the molecular oxygen to form ozone that means o dot react with o2 to form in the to form the o3 in the presence of metal so here we are n is the third body of this that is nitrogen so with the help of nitrogen only the atomic oxygen react with the molecular oxygen to form the ozone that means o3 so in the ozone that formed disturbs itself in the atmosphere and absorb harmful uv radiations from the sun then mechanism of ozone layer depletion in 1970 it was found that the ozone layer was attacked by chlorofluorocarbons that been cfcs which are released into atmosphere by refrigerating units air conditioning systems aerosol sprays and cleaning solvents so these are all the main sources of releasing the chlorofluorocarbons which affects the ozone so the chlorofluorocarbon releases chlorine which breaks ozone into oxygen the following reactions will occur so the chlorofluorocarbon cf2cl react with the o2 to form the cf2o and chloroxide clo in that cl react with the o3 to form the clo plus o2 that means the ozone molecules uh, depleting occur the mainly due to in the chlorine gas in that chlorine atomic chlorine in that atomic chlorine are the nation chlorine react with the ozone to form the molecular oxygen and the atomic oxygen so the main sources is the chlorine in that chlorine comes from the chlorofluorocarbon again it is the chloroxide react with the atomic oxygen to form the molecular oxygen and the free chlorine so the each chlorine atom is capable of attacking several ozone molecules so a 1 percentage loss of ozone results in a 2 percentage increase in the uv rays reaching the earth surface so which will be very harmful to the all living beings on the earth so the ozone depleting substances the ozone depleting substances essentially consist of chlorine or bromine atoms which are extremely reactive while they are in the free state the following gases are accumulated in the atmosphere and are found to be instruments in the ozone dep depletion chlorofluorocarbon refrigerators in refrigerator uh, propellant in aero sol sprays cans hydrofluorocarbon hydrochlorofluorocarbon is the another uh, ozone depleting chemicals then bromofluorocarbons bfc fire action gases other chemicals certain halogen compounds are potential ozone destroyers up to 10 times more powerful than the cfcs sometimes the atmospheric sulfur dioxide is converted into the sulfuric acid by greatly increase in the rate of ozone then the effect on the uh, environmental impacts and the consequences of ozone layer depletion the effect on human health the uv rays generally material in the skin cells which causes the skin cancer uh, fair, fair, 
skin to people long exposure to high level UV rays increase the risk of non uh, malign skin cancer. Then prolonged exposure to UV rays lead to slow blindness called acetine keratins. This could also leads to cataracts. That means eye damages will occur. So reduce the eye power. Exposure of the UV rays can uh, suppress the immune response into the also the human resistivity leading to cancer, allergies and other uh, in, in, infectious agents. Then effect of aquatic systems. Affect aquatic forms such as uh, phytoplankton fish, laurel crabs. The phytoplankton consumes large amount of the carbon dioxide. Decreasing uh, population of the phytoplankton could have more amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which contributes to global warming. Then effects of materials, degradation of the paint, plastics and other polymetric material will result in the economic loss due to the effects of the UV radiations. Then effect of climatic factor, the ozone depleting chemicals can contribute in global warming which increases the average temperature of the earth surface. How can we control? Replacing CFCs by other materials which are less damaging then the usage of cases such as methyl bromide will which be avoided. Then nuclear accident and the holocaust. Energy releasing during a nuclear reactions is called as the nuclear energy. Then type of nuclear accidents, nuclear test, nuclear explosives, large amount of nuclear energy and radioactive products into the atmosphere. Types of nuclear accidents, the nuclear test, nuclear exposures, carried out into the underground causes settling down the radioactive materials on the earth surface and radioactive practices, radioactive rays into the atmosphere. The nuclear power plant accident. Radiation get released due to the, uh, this accident is occurring in the nuclear power plant located into the seismic variations. Then improper disposition of the radioactive waste drums stored underground can rust and leak radioactive materials into the real land and uh, air. Accident during transport to core meltdown into the major accident at the nuclear power plant. The effect of nuclear radiations. Radiations may break chemical bonds such as DNA in the cells which may interactions prolonged and delayed types it may even carry out future generations. The exposure at low dosage of the radiations uh, people do not die by begin to suffer from the fatigue, vomiting and less of the air. So exposure at the higher dosage of the radiations uh, affect the bone marrow, blood cells, uh, natural resistance and uh, blood force into the clot. Exposure at very high dosage of the radiation kills the organisms by damaging the tissues of heart and uh, brain. The nuclear winter is the another factor, nuclear bombardment which causes combustion of the wood, plastic, petroleum, forest etc. Large quantity of the black soot will be carried to the stratosphere, then the black soot will absorb all UV radiations and will not allow the radiations to the reach the earth, therefore cooling will result. So this is due to the nuclear explosions, opposite to the global warming which occur in the as the nuclear winter. The effect of nuclear winter is lowering the global temperature, even summer the temperature will be around freezing temperature, so crop product will be reduced causing fam famines and human sufferings. So the examples of the nuclear holocaust is the nuclear war at the Chernobyl disaster. Then control measures of the nuclear winter holocaust is the so suitable precautions are to the taken training must be given to the people for handling this materials to avoid accident. 
and constant monitoring of the radiation level has to be carried out. The regular checks and the control measures are done by the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board under the Department of Atom Economy. So the nuclear war and uh, Chernobyl disaster is the main uh, case studies of the nuclear holocaust. Then public awareness. How can we give the public awareness to the people to reduce the various environmental issues in the environment, uh, society? The presently degrading due to the main activities like pollution, deforestation, overgrazing, rapid industries and urbanization. In order to conserve our environment, each and every one must be aware about uh, our environmental problems and objectives of various environmental policies at national and local levels. Then what are the various objectives of the public awareness? To create awareness among people of a rural and a city about ecological imbalances, local environment and technological development. To organize the meetings, uh, group discussion and development tree plantation programs and the exhibitions. To focus on current environmental problems and uh, situations. To learn to live simple and eco-friendly manner. Then method to create environmental awareness. Environmental awareness must be created through formal and informal education to all sections of the society. The various methods that is useful for the raising environmental awareness are discussed here. Environmental awareness in the school, colleges, through mass media, cinema, newspapers, voluntary organizations like NSS and NCC, Rotary Club, traditional techniques, for place dreams for rural peoples, arranging uh, competition, story writing, essay writing, uh, we're giving to the prize to the motivations to the school students and the youngers.